It's more than just a handshake. It is Greece's bid to rejoin the European fold. Five years of economic crisis and $300 billion in loans from its partners have reduced Greece's status to that of supplicant. Now it hopes to turn that weakness into strength. Greece is now very near to the exit of this deep crisis and the Greek success will be a European success. And because Greece uh, has been hit very hard by unemployment, we have lost uh, 25% of our GDP in the last uh, six years of recession, we are more sensitive and I think we are going to be more motivated to do whatever could be done in order to promote growth and to promote employment. Growth is a top priority for the Greeks who've lost a million jobs during the crisis. Even the public sector is now slimming down as a result. The National Opera Orchestra performing the opening ceremony survives on a fraction of its former budget. And that's a kind of fate than the one Kaliroi Dionysiou suffered. She lost her job as a first violinist when the government shut down the former state broadcaster and shed 2,000 jobs. I no longer believe in Europe, I'm sorry to say. I'd like to belong to this family, but I don't believe it supported either me or the country as a whole. I don't think any greater calamity can befall the Greeks. We don't have health or education. We don't have culture. We don't have anything. What's left for us to lose? Amid such disaster, many people have questioned whether Greece should be spending money hosting an EU president presidency at all. Greece aims to spend under $70 million, about a third less than the cheapest recent EU presidencies, and that, the government believes, is a bargain if it wins key goals, convincing Europeans to place growth above austerity to create jobs, and to help Greece police European maritime borders against illegal immigration. The EU's wealthier member states have established their economic and political supremacy during the crisis. Greece is presenting its presidency as a moment to emphasize equality and democracy. John Saropoulos, Al Jazeera, Athens.